How's it going guys, it's the final render here, and I am very happy to say that the e-learning course which I've been working on for the last month and a half or so is public and ready to go. The YouTube gaming video guide is ready to be purchased. The course itself is over six and a half hours of tutorials and video lessons teaching you guys how to produce high quality YouTube content. A lot of people have said I'm actually a pretty good teacher from looking at the creation kit tutorials I did. So if you want kind of a sneak peek on what they kind of look like, you can go and check out those Fallout 4 creation kit tutorials. I have very heavily discounted the course using the code in the description, so you guys can go ahead and start learning with the course immediately. But more on the course at the end of Fallout 4, building with mods. Let's go. So how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Fallout 4 Building with Mods. And in this video, we have come to the Drumlin Diner. The Drumlin Diner is a very nice location in Fallout 4 and has a very minor quest line. You'll probably find this place very early on in the game when you start to head south, kind of past the Starlight Drive-In. And it is a very nice little kind of 60s diner feel. And the business is running bad. Trudy and her son are in some trouble with some local drug dealers. And it is up to you to go ahead and free the family from the drug dealers and also go ahead and buy some stuff from her shop. However, it is not an actual decent restaurant. So what we are going to be doing in this video is turning this place into a perfect restaurant so people can come here and buy food. And also, as kind of like a tribute to the original 1960s diners, which of course are actually ones that are made in modern day times and recreated to look like 60s. But hey, never mind, you know the places, so let's go with this fantastic video of Fallout 4 building with mods. I started off by going ahead and scrapping everything in the environment. This place obviously isn't a settlement by primarily, so I can't just use the scrap all command. And using alternate settlements, I'm going to go ahead and put lots of new concrete down. There is a lot of concrete pathing already, but it's all been destroyed by the nuclear atomic blasts. And also, there is a huge car park here. However, I actually wanted to go ahead and make the car park a bit bigger, make it flatter, so therefore we can actually go ahead and get cars in here, if anyone happens to have a working one, that is. I went ahead and used lots of metal railings to go ahead and segment off the drive-in and drive-out sections of the car park, so cars won't go and hit each other head-on. And to tell you the truth, it doesn't necessarily have to be cars, it could be Brahmin, it could be Power Armor, any kind of vehicle you want. But there was a problem with this place, being that a lot of the stuff wasn't scrappable, even with the console commands. So I actually had to go into the creation kit and manually get rid of a lot of the stuff I didn't want, go ahead and repair a lot of the parts of the building which were broken initially and replace them with fresh ones so they look very nice and clean and tidy and everything matches up nicely. I was also able to go ahead and grab some of the nearby Drumlin Diner signs and put them around the location a bit more so now there's three of them rather than two to make it look a bit nicer. So now the place is ready for some more building. And here it is, once we have actually put the new signs in place and repaired everything, it looks much, much nicer indeed. This place actually looks functional now because there were holes in the roof, there was ivy everywhere, and it wasn't a very nice place to work or to eat. But now, it is absolutely perfect and ready for new customers. So let's go ahead and use the Homemaker mod to go ahead and add some ramps to the actual in and out parts of the car park. And remember, just because there aren't really cars anymore, doesn't mean that I'm expecting cars to turn up. But of course, I'm going to put some wrecked cars here anyway, almost like for show. The physics was a little drunk, to say the least. The physics didn't really know what to do with all of these foundations placed everywhere. But after a little bit of practice, I was able to put down lots of cool cars, kind of mostly for decoration, and segment them off using metal sheets. So it looks like an actual car park. It looks very nice, actually. This place almost looks like a museum to an old diner rather than being an actual functional diner, which I actually really like. It kind of makes sense that you would have these kind of little pockets of history preserved. And Fallout, of course, is about preserving a small little pocket of history for all time. Turning my attention to the inside of the diner now, I'm gonna go ahead and give Trudy a brand new kitchen area. Her little fridge and cooker wasn't the best, it had definitely seen better days, so we've gone ahead and got her a sink and oven combination pack. And of course, using Settlement Objects expansion pack, we were able to get lots of new things for her kitchen, so we can get lots of fresh ingredients, some canned ingredients, and go ahead and give her the tools she needs to serve coffee, make pies, make pancakes, everything you would need. And using the X and J guy filled mods all in one plus new, we have got a huge buffet table full of ingredients to use in the kitchen. 
I'm also gonna head and had some new Coca Cola dispensers in there to kind of have like the kind of Coke float, Coke and ice cream kind of vibe up in there, along with a classic retro 60s jukebox and some very old kind of backlit kind of movie cinema posters that you would often see in these kind of fake 60s diners that we get nowadays. And using Business Settlement's 1.9 standalone, we have got lots of flags around the place. And the flags aren't necessarily advertising for this place, but almost kind of like sponsorship in a way. And using OC Decorator Static Loot, we have got lots of new items to go ahead and add to the environment to make it look like a diner. We've got lots of plates, we've got some trash cans, we've got lots of food and cutlery, and we've also got lots of empty coffee mugs and salt dispensers to go ahead and put on the tables along with some napkins. So it actually looks like the place is ready for customers. And we've also got lots of TV dinner plates to make it look like the place is busy. After that, we need to go ahead and put some more lighting in here. And then at night, this place looks absolutely fantastic, people. This place looks like a really nice place to go ahead and have your supper. We've got lots of advertising signs and everything just looks glorious from the inside of this place. And it really does look like, as I said, almost kind of like a museum, almost a homage to classic 1960s diners that you would see. Kind of like in Greece, for example. And they look really, really good, and I'm really happy the way it turned out. We've even got a really nice wind farm on the top, which actually really fits the aesthetic. And using a lot of the stuff from the Contraptions DLC, I am able to add a big sign saying, Welcome to the Drumlin Diner. Specials available inside. It took about maybe three minutes to actually select all of the te text and stuff for that sign. But, you know, it, it looks okay. It looks okay. And here it is in the daylight with the car park and the inside all done. Looks really, really nice and we've still got an awful lot of space to go ahead and add lots of seating area to the outside. So let's go. We're going to go ahead and use a lot of the patio furniture from the Nuka World DLC so that we have got an awful lot of space and also I really like the red. The ones in the base game are actually blue I believe but the red really works with the Drumlin Diner aesthetic. And we've also got lots of arcade games from Nuka World. This is so that when the kids come down, you can go ahead and play some arcade games. And if I remember correctly, a lot of these restaurants would have like pinball tables and stuff like that. So it's kind of good to go ahead and keep the idea of having the arcade. And of course, we spammed a load of other decorations as well, again, to make it look like a family-friendly diner. Again, kind of like a tourist attraction. That's kind of what I'm going for with this place. And it's starting to come together quite nicely. The car park, especially at the back, looks really, really good. And we've got plenty of places for people to sit down and eat their food, or even just for people to rest along the way. This is a perfect little resting spot from Sanctuary Hills going down to the rest of the Commonwealth. So this would be a little good place to go ahead and rest up before you headed out again. But seeing as I do want this restaurant to have a little bit of functionality as well, I decided to go ahead and build a big greenhouse area towards the back. This is for staff only, this place, and it is going to be an elevated greenhouse with a food processing machine so that they can go ahead and produce some of their own food. And I was originally going to also add a butcher shop to this section as well so that they could go ahead and make hamburgers and whatnot. But then I thought about it a bit more and I thought, is refrigeration still a thing in Fallout 4 universe? I'm actually going law friendly, fancy that. And I kind of decided that refrigeration might actually not be a feasible thing in this world anymore because I doubt they've really got high access to helium which is needed to make fully functioning refrigeration units. So I decided against the butcher shop and using the Northland crafting, diggers, resources and jobs, I've got a really cool little kind of garden area for people to work with. And now I'm placing the food processing unit. We go ahead and put all the fresh produce from the greenhouse into here. And it produces food that they can go and sell in the diner. Again, I didn't want meat. You would have to go ahead and get fresh meat, seeing as refrigeration isn't a thing anymore. So therefore, meat will be bought on the day it is cooked. And food and veg will be processed into food, which can be stored away in cupboards. So there is a very nice floating greenhouse out of the way from the restaurant so people can't accidentally walk in there and break everything and also it kind of keeps the look of the restaurant itself really really nice and tranquil and by itself so guys this is the restaurant fully done i actually think it's a really nice one i do still have quite a lot of open space for people to walk around in and people to kind of sit down and rest but i really like the aesthetic i've gone here it's kind of fallouty but it's also kind of a time capsule kind of a museum in a way it's almost like what if someone in the Fallout 4 universe tried to make a classic 60s diner, but didn't quite have the resources to do it properly, so it's still a bit old and decrepit, but the actual place itself is functional and ready for business. We've got an awful lot of nice decorations in here. A lot of the stuff in this actually came from the DLC, so the DLC definitely did add an awful lot of good stuff in this case. So guys, 
Thank you very much for watching this episode of Fallout 4, Building with Mods. It's been a long time, I know, but I told myself I would only do Building with Mods when I really had a good idea, when there was something I really wanted to do with it, rather than just kind of spamming the same old mods again and again. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and check out all of the cool Patreon people in the description. Remember to wait just a few moments to find out a little bit more about the e-learning course which I've been producing, which you guys can purchase right now with a very heavy discount code. And I'll see you next time. This has been the final render, and you've been the audience. Until next time, farewell. So there is some more Fallout 4 building with mods for you guys to enjoy. I'm now going to tell you a bit more about the course which I've been producing, because whilst I have let you guys know a little bit about it, I have kind of kept it mostly secret. I've kind of given little hints on Twitter and stuff, but I haven't really spoken to you guys fully about what it is. The course itself I produced in order to show you guys how you can make high quality videos. And the thing about it is that it is very in-depth, this course. This course is very much in-depth and about production of the videos. There are many courses online which tell you 105 tips on how to get high views on YouTube. This is mostly about production and how you can actually record, edit and upload your videos effectively. And I've been using an awful lot of the knowledge which I have learned from the film and television industry I have in the past, in particular in the sports and streaming industry, as well as a lot of my knowledge that I learned in university in order to go ahead and teach you guys how to actually work with video. A lot of the stuff which I teach you is stuff that a lot of YouTubers might not actually know if they're not educated on it and they don't have the years of experience which I have doing it. So there is a lot of stuff in there which is not so much advanced, but it's the correct way to do it, so to speak. There are many tutorials online, say if you're learning how to record something, they say, okay, what you want to do, you want to open up the program, and then once you've opened up the program, you hit this button, after that you hit this button, then you set this dial to 10, and then you hit record. My lessons actually teach you why things need to be done a certain way, and they explain the theory behind it. So therefore, you actually understand the programs you are using, you understand the technology that you are working with. So when it comes to buying new technology and things getting better in the future, you actually know a lot of the theory already. We do touch on film theory quite a bit, we do actually talk about the history of frame rate and the history of resolution, for example, so that you can actually learn about the past ones, so you know why the current resolutions work the way they do, for example. And there is an awful lot of content in there which a lot of people might not actually have in their complete course. There is some stuff on how to create thumbnails, there is even some stuff on 3D modeling in there. I've teaching you some kind of basic 3D modeling and 3D animation in there as well, so you can actually learn a little bit about 3D as well as just how to record using videos. And also I go a lot of in-depth with the technical details and things like microphones, so when it comes to buying the microphones you want, it means that you actually understand exactly why you need to purchase a certain microphone rather than another one, for example, because sometimes the cheaper option might actually be the better one. But if you don't know the theory as to why this one is better, you might actually accidentally overlook it. So therefore I've gone very in-depth to teach you why certain bits of technology actually are the ones you really want. And the actual production value of the course, I think, is, is pretty high. You know, I've tried very hard to actually make the videos look good, and they've got lots of animations in there to explain how certain pieces of technology work. I've even got some really nice stuff which I filmed, of say, like the Blue Yeti, which I'm using right now. Some really nice high-quality footage of that. And also some of the equipment we use that is besides microphones, such as the Elgato and the Ava Media. We've got some nice high-quality footage of those. And really, the idea of the course is to just teach you guys why you need to actually do things a certain way because it actually makes your workflow much more effective. If you just kind of jump in, hit record and try to work it out as you go, you're going to be walking off slow. But if you actually know a lot of the theory and the technology behind it, not only will you be faster at making videos, not only will they be better quality in the end, but also it kind of sets a good precedence, and a lot of the stuff you will learn is stuff that people who work in kind of actual video and film broadcasting use, because just because it's YouTube gaming and just because it's YouTube in general doesn't mean you shouldn't apply the same theory and logic you use when making an actual production. Sure, it's not going on a cinema screen or a television screen, but it still requires the exact same amount of attention in the videos to ensure that they are great quality. And frankly, 
that is what is ultimately the best thing on YouTube. It doesn't matter if one video you do gets several hundred thousand views if the quality is bad because people will either click off it or they won't come back for more. But if you can consistently produce high quality videos, that is definitely the best way to ensure that people actually stay watching your videos. As I said, there is a very heavy discount code in the description. If you use that discount code, you will get a big discount on the course. So therefore, it will go straight to me and everything will be great for that reason. And the main reason I've done this course, I'm not going to lie to you guys, is to make money. I want to be able to produce something so I can sell it to people. Not just to you guys, but to everyone across the internet, of course. And let me put it this way. If I sell... I think it's something like 60, maybe 70 of these courses at this discounted code, then I can go ahead and upgrade this computer. Because like this video that you actually just saw, the Fallout 4 Building With Mods video, it was actually the first time I've actually uploaded Building With Mods in 60 frames per second. And even then, it's not actually full 60 frames per second. It kind of teeters around 45 to 55 frames a second. But if you guys buy this course, then I guarantee you we could easily upgrade the CPU in this rig and we can have a solid 60 frames a second all round. Especially for games like Subnautica, which are... Uh, okay, they're still suffering a little bit with the early access bug, but you know what I'm saying. So if you guys want to purchase the course, you can go to the link in the description and use the coupon code I have provided in the description so you guys can go ahead and buy the course. If you guys really want to hit the ground running when you start YouTube, or even if you're currently doing YouTubing, you might actually learn something new, then go ahead and buy this course. It would really, really help me out financially if you guys did that. And not only that, but you guys will actually get something good out of it as well. It's not just something I've thrown together to try to scam some money off people. It's actually a high quality product, I think anyway, but I'm a bit biased, of course. And I've put a lot of emphasis on trying to make it the best possible product I can produce. Or if you're young or you don't have your own bank account, for example, maybe ask a parent or a guardian of some kind if you can actually purchase this course because I'm teaching you a lot of the stuff which I learned in university and by working in the professional industry. So therefore you will actually learn a lot of the theory and a lot of the kind of back work of how to actually produce videos so that when you're older you can actually go ahead and get a job in this industry. I mean it's what I did, you know, some of the first videos I ever produced were YouTube videos and then later on, after I finished university, I was working in the industry full time. So it's entirely up to you. But however, keep in mind, I will be having it discounted at a very regular basis for you guys. So I really hope you can actually purchase the course. So guys, if you want to learn how to actually produce YouTube videos, go ahead, follow the link, use the coupon code, and then everything will be great. Not only will I benefit from it, but you guys will benefit from it as well. So guys... Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. This has been The Final Render, and you've been the audience. Until next time, farewell. Remember, link in the description for the course. Very heavy discount code along with it as well. Bye-bye for now.